Welcome to Thriller Recaps. Today, I am explaining the movie. Meet Dave, explaining every scene as it happens. Watch till the end, and please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this. The movie starts with an object flying in space. It was knocked off course by a satellite. Meanwhile, a young boy named Josh Morrison stares through his telescope and sees the object falling from the sky, breaking into his bedroom window. This made him scream. With fear, he hid under his bed. His single mom, Gina, rushes to his room, mistaking the hole in the window for a baseball. Josh tries to explain, but she doesn't understand him. The orb lands in his fishbowl, quickly draining the water along with the goldfish. Three months later, a massive fireball crashes into the water near Liberty Island. It turns out to be a human-like spaceship that walks through the city, trying to imitate humans. The spaceship crosses the road at the wrong time, and Gina hits it with her car, sending it flying. The fallen spaceship sits up, startling Gina. She sees that its leg is turned at an odd angle, so she goes to call an ambulance, but then it disappears. The spaceship goes to an isolated alley, where tiny humanoid aliens check on it. The captain has a meeting with his crew, telling them of their primary objective, to save their planet, Nil, which was experiencing an energy crisis. They were to recover the metal ball, which had diverted from its main course, meant to drain the Earth's oceans in order to get salt. The captain's researcher, Number three, informs the captain of the risk of draining the Earth's oceans on humans, but the second in command, number two, doesn't think they should care about what happens to the humans. Meanwhile, Josh and Gina see the runaway man outside with his still twisted foot, so they go to meet him. Inside the spaceship, the captain and his crew brace themselves to talk to Gina and Josh. Gina offers to call the ambulance again, but just then, when she and Josh look at his foot, it's back to normal. The orb is sensed around by the crew. Josh heads to school while Gina invites the unusual man home. She introduces herself to him, and he tells her that his name is Dave Ming Chan, based on a quick scan of common earth names done by number three. She offers him breakfast with her, then she talks to him about not pressing charges on her for the incident. He sees a picture of her dead husband, a Navy captain. Number three sees their missing orb with Josh in a photograph taken at the science presentation through Dave's eyes. Gina explains to Dave that Josh thinks the ball is from space. Dave asks his crew to locate Josh, which they do, so he bids Gina goodbye as he leaves. Officers Dooley and Stevie Knox are tasked with inspecting the site where the spaceship landed. Officer Stevie tells Dooley not to get any ideas when Dooley gives his opinion on the accident. Number two expresses his displeasure when he sees people crossing when the stop sign clearly shows that they shouldn't, and the captain gets concerned by his revulsion to humans. He tells the crew doctor to check on number two. Meanwhile, Dave walks through the park on his way to Josh's school. He seems to draw attention due to his outfit, so he decides to change it. Dave changes his outfit at a store where he clones cash for payment. Meanwhile, a bully takes away the orb from Josh, claiming it as his. Dave goes to Josh's school, where he is mistaken for a substitute teacher. After class, he eventually talks to Josh alone. Dave tells Josh about the orb, making Josh suspect that he is from outer space, but Dave denies it. Dave asks him for it, so Josh tells him that the ball was taken from him by a bully. Rich. They head out in search of Rich at a store where they had hoped to find him, but they don't find him there, and just then, armed robbers enter the store to rob. Dave doesn't get the command they give about everyone lying on the floor. The robbers mistake his ignorance for defiance, so they try to attack him, but he throws one of them on the floor with a surprising show of strength. He seizes the gun from the other man, making him run away scared for his life. Josh asks Dave about his strength and mannerisms, which Dave dismisses by changing the topic. He doesn't answer any of Josh's questions. Since they failed to find Rich, Josh tells Dave about his mom's birthday, which was the next day, so he invites Dave out to a street fair, which everyone would be attending, including Rich. Number two objects strongly, saying their power supply was diminishing so they can't stay till the next day, meaning they would have to find the orb themselves. Dave doesn't agree with him, saying they need Josh's help. Dave spends time with Josh playing video games before they are joined by Gina who asks Dave to join them for dinner. Officer Dooley gets an imprint of Dave's face on sight. Dave asks Gina about a painting she had made. She tells him about feeling love when she made it. Dave bids Gina goodnight as he leaves. He wanders around the street before asking to join a homeless man at his corner. The man offers him his only blanket, which takes Dave by surprise, wondering about the man's strange behavior. The captain is briefed by the crew doctor about the crew displaying human feelings, and the crew go to their various rooms to rest but he goes back to the control room, where he finds number three doing some cultural research. 
He thanks her for helping him to do well in school in the past. She shows him a video of a human male being romantic to a female. They both get engrossed in watching it, and when it ends, they become emotional, springing away from each other on the realization of their proximity. Dooley has Dave's picture drawn from the impression he had left at the landing site. He asks that the picture be sent to different public institutions so that they can ID him. Their chief mocks Dooley and Stevie, calling them idiots because Dooley believes something landed there. But Dooley believes he is right and he would find the unknown man. Dave joins Gina and Josh at the fair where they take rides, which some of the crew found exhilarating as they are moved by the force of the rides. Josh gets Dave to join an eating competition, which he wins. He is given a stuffed toy for a gift, which he thinks is an enemy until he realizes that it's inanimate. Number three advises that he gives the toy to Gina, which he does, surprising Gina. He excuses himself to go use the restroom, and on his way back, he meets Mark Rhodes, a friend of Gina. He hopes that Dave's intentions with Gina and Josh are genuine. He tells Dave that they would have a problem if he isn't genuine. Dave sees Josh with Rich and other kids. Josh is asking Rich to give back the rock to him. Dave gets there just in time to stop Rich from punching Josh. He turns him upside down, making all the contents in Rich's pocket fall, including the rock, which he picks up, then he drops Rich. Rich and his friends run away from there. Gina comes looking for Dave and Josh. Josh gets Dave to try a pitching game. Number two tells him that their work there was over, so they should be looking for an ocean to throw the orb, then they can head home. Dave insists on giving the game a try. He fails on the first try, but he gets it the next time, though he throws the ball too hard, so it bounces back to hit him square on the head, making him fall down unconscious. Meanwhile, inside the spaceship, their system is affected by the blow. Dave is taken to the hospital, where he is shocked back to consciousness, jump-starting their system. Dave apologizes to Gina for ruining her birthday, so he offers to take her out. Number two expresses his displeasure to Dave for not following their plans so they can go back home and this makes the captain send him out of the control room. Dave asks Josh for a suggestion on a place where they can go. Dave, Josh, and Gina go to a salsa place. Dave is recognized at the hospital by the security guard, so he informs officers Dooley and Stevie, telling them where to find them. Number two sees the crew members exhibiting human mannerisms after spending so much time on Earth, which pisses him off even more. Dave tells Josh that he would soon leave, and he tells him how much help he had been to him. Number four, the spaceship chief security, gives number three a makeover. Number three goes back to the control center, where the captain is stunned by her look. Gina invites Dave to the dance floor to dance after dancing with Josh, which he agrees to, disappointing number three. He is unable to dance with her, so number four takes control, dancing impressively with her. Number two convinces the spaceship security to help him seize command from the captain. The police arrive to arrest Dave. At the station, he is questioned by Dooley but he doesn't answer. Mark joins Gina and Josh at the police station. Number two takes command of the spaceship, having the captain detained with the support of number three, who is jealous of Gina. Under number two's command, Dave breaks out of the police station, causing havoc while exiting, and number 17 falls out of the spaceship into a coffee cup. Josh pleads with Mark and Gina to help Dave. Dave tells Gina not-so-nice words before leaving. Seeing the havoc number two is intending to do, Number three sneaks off to release the captain so they can stop number two, but they don't get far because he discovers number three missing, so he sends security after her. They are apprehended and thrown out of the spaceship into the street. They go in search of the spaceship, navigating through the busy streets. Dooley sees number 17 inside the coffee cup. He tells him of Dave's destination, then he is placed inside Officer Dooley's pocket. The captain apologizes to number three for ignoring her telling her that he asked for her to be part of the mission because she was kind, intelligent, and beautiful. He admits that without her, he would be nothing, which pleases her as he continues to tell her of his love for her. The captain and number three gain and trance back into the spaceship. Number two takes Dave to the harbor, where he tries to throw the orb into the ocean, but the captain overrides it. The metal orb slips out of Dave's hand and rolls into the ocean, starting a typhoon. The captain reinstates himself as captain, ordering for number two to be imprisoned in the spaceship but forever. The captain orders for the orb to be retrieved, but he is told that they only have enough power to retrieve it, but might not be left with any power to return home. The captain decides to save the Earth, saying the Earth doesn't deserve to be destroyed. He asks his crew their thoughts on it, and they all agree. The ball is retrieved, thereby shutting down the spaceship. Dave throws the orb into the sky, clearing the clouds with it. Josh, Mark, and Gina rush to meet Dave at the harbor. 
The spaceship powers down while Dooley and his partner catch up and point their guns at him, asking for Dave's submission. Dave is informed that with no power, their shields are disabled, leaving the crew defenseless, so they should prepare to count their casualties. Josh tries to tell the police officers that Dave is harmless, but he is ignored. So he grabs Stevie's taser, which he uses on Dave, recharging him, making the power come up. The captain comes out of a door inside Dave's mouth, shocking everyone, and the police officers stand down. Dave explains that his second-in-command had orchestrated what had happened at the police station. The captain thanks Josh for his help, telling him that his father would be proud of him. He is joined by number three as he says goodbye to Josh and Gina, telling her that he now understands love while holding number three. Number seventeen, who is still inside Dooley's pocket, is then returned to the spaceship by Dooley. Dave prepares to fly away, but just then a team from the FBI arrives and throws a net over Dave, trapping the spaceship. Dave's crew evacuates to one of the ship's lifeboats, which happens to be Dave's shoes. A shoe is detached from the spaceship, which has all the crew members save number two, as they head home to Nil, leaving behind the ship. While in the lifeboat, the captain asks for number three to become his number two, which she accepts, and they kiss. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. I would also appreciate a comment because it helps like you can't even imagine. It's a new channel and every bit of support counts.